Hello, we are now going to go through a few more popular file formats, this time for videos and just general documents as well. So a video is really just a sequence of still images called frames and we have different file formats for videos as opposed to you just using the still image ones because we also have to store audio as well. So generally speaking you're going to be probably producing videos which need to be designed for HDTVs so modern TVs have a specific, have a particular aspect ratio, which is about the resolution of each frame, how many pixels is the width, how many pixels is the height, and HDTVs use a 16 to 9 aspect ratio for height, for width to height, sorry. So you're going to have to want to hit, adhere to this. So HD720 is sort of a lower end of HDTV. A few years ago this would have been as high quality as you could expect but generally nowadays you're going to be looking for 1080p or even 4k which as you can see here 4k is many more pixels than HD 720 so if you are say producing a video or a film you might want to make sure you are hiring a 4k camera as opposed to just a basic HD one which may quickly become outdated as TVs transition mostly towards 4k and even 8k for maybe some situations as a director you may want to change the aspect ratio maybe make it to be designed to be watched on a phone or make it a slightly more old-fashioned aspect ratio for some stylistic reason but generally it'll be HDTV and using this ratio now of course if you're going to store a video in 4k the file size will be much larger than if it was 720p for example but most almost all video extensions video file formats have encryption built in so these three mp4 flv and avi are very very common extensions which don't have differences which i think are significant to point out they are all widely support supported which means they're portable they can be played on main devices played on laptops tvs consoles whatever you want they're very well supported they're not you know specific formats for particular purposes but crucially all have compression and usually it'll be lossy compression although you can sort of switch things out using codecs because clearly we want to try and reduce the file size. But the, because we have compression, the actual quality from the original can be significantly reduced. Even if you had a really, really high quality film camera, applying heavy compression to it can reduce quality by quite a lot. HTML5 is a little bit different because it's designed for videos embedded in websites. In particular, HTML, as you may know, is the language used to build websites, like really the foundations of websites. And so HTML has a, a function for allowing you to embed videos directly into your web page. Now the issue of this really is it can have quite a slow load time. So if you're going to load a website with an embedded video in it, it can take a long time to load. So if you're embedding a long video, it may not be the best idea. It may be better to embed, say, a link to YouTube or a link to Vimeo, some other service. There is not too much to say more about video formats. Just, I would say if you're talking about a website, HDMI 5 might be a good option. If you're talking about anything else, mention MP4, FLV or AVI. Although FLV stands for Flash Video, and Flash is being discontinued at some point, so in a few years time, maybe FLV will be less supportive than it is right now. Animations are subtly different to videos. Animations don't have audio, whereas videos do, which requires a bit more data to be stored. A GIF is probably the best known animation format. And a GIF can actually be used for still images as well as animations. Originally a GIF was just designed for still images, but could also support multiple images in a sequence, which is really what an animation is. A GIF does store data losslessly. It doesn't delete any data, although it does try to rearrange it to make it more efficient. So there will be some reduction in file size, but it's not a lot to be honest, especially because the actual compression algorithm it uses is quite old at this point and it's not very effective. But just as a property of GIFs, uh, there is no audio. So if you're trying to rep if you're trying to convert a video to a GIF, you're going to lose your audio and possibly some quality too. Because actually, a GIF, as an example here, possibly you can see a bit of flickering. You can see maybe a bit of reduction of quality. At least I can on my screen. GIFs are usually not great quality because a GIF cannot store that many colors in an image. Only 256 per frame, which actually is not very much. If you've got lots of stuff going on in your GIF, you can only store so many colors, and so the quality can get reduced even though it is lossless. So it's lossless, but it can only store so many colors which can reduce the quality. But because also this lossless compression is not very good, file sizes can still be quite large, even though we have got some compression. And finally, talking about some document formats, so for more general documents you might use for 
pre-production or just in production maybe so we have various different and loads of different file extensions and formats so docx for microsoft word psd for photoshop pub for microsoft publisher which is a desktop publishing software loads of specific paid software formats so they are working for really specific applications usually branded and usually paid as well right you have to pay for microsoft office you've got to pay for photoshop so these extensions maybe are not so good if you're trying to keep things portable you know they need specific software to be able to view and may not work with other software so you have got to be careful if you're storing stuff using really specific file formats because they just haven't got the portability which other formats like pdfs might have so pdfs are very widely compatible and portable you can view pdfs pretty much on every device and increasingly they can be viewed the same on every device right sometimes you might open different file on a phone and it will look different to when you open it on a laptop but PDF should show you it in the same way because really a PDF is like a photo of a document it should keep it consistent. The issue with PDFs is, which you may know from experience, they are very difficult to edit and change often to be able to edit and change a PDF after it's been created you've got to pay for a more expensive version and sometimes even because it is being converted to like a photo it can't really be changed once you create it but maybe you might do your editing using Microsoft Word or Photoshop and then save it as a PDF so that it can become more portable and can be viewed by more people so I've given you lots of information in this video and the previous one about different file formats. Not super exciting information, but really it's just a case of learning it and trying to think of what's good about it, what's bad about it, and general properties as well. So flashcards might be a good way of learning this, but it is really just a case of trying to remember as many as you can so that they can be applied in different scenarios in the exam.